Okay, here we go with the emoji dice build. This is quite a good project uh, after you've got used to drawing basic shapes and you're fairly familiar with the create sketch extrusion process. In this one we'll be doing six different kind of sketching techniques on each face uh, and learning a few new skills along the way. So first thing as always we are going to save our work if you need to make a new design just press the little plus uh, if you've already got some work open uh, but first thing save and I'm gonna call this dice I'm then gonna right click on the uh, project title over here and create a new component which I will also call dice this process of making a new component is not essential really for this project it's just a good habit to get into the more complex things you will build later on it's really beneficial to have them made up of components so uh, I suggest you kind of get in the habit of doing that now even though truth be told not essential for this uh, this task right I've got a blank page here you, you may you may see the grid maybe not if your grid isn't there grids and snaps at the bottom layout grid and you'll be able to then see your grid you don't have to uh, but uh, I find it a little bit easier if I can see the grid uh, that I'm working on I'm now going to create sketch and start on this base plane here your view may be in, in that kind of orientation not entirely sure why that is but some computers it comes through uh, from that angle some like this but it, it's going to be this bottom plane that we're working on whichever orientation you, you're currently looking at it in and we are going to draw a 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter square so I'm going to use the rectangle tool here or under here rectangle or you could just press the R key every time you see one of these letters L D R they're all over in different uh, you know different places that's a shortcut so if I click the R key on the keyboard it will start me drawing a rectangle but as I'm here I'll click that I'm gonna click once in the middle and then drag up uh, and off to the right hand side now there's two ways you could dimension this uh, to 40 by 40. The easiest way is to type 40 and then without moving the mouse, so I've let go of the mouse here, as soon as you move it, it's going to change these measurements. Um, so type 40 and then press the tab key. Now that's in the far left side of the keyboard and it's the two arrows uh, that are kind of pointing away from each other so if you if you press tab that will move between the dimensions and I can put 40 there as well <coughs> now let's just say uh, that you didn't do that and you drew your rectangle and clicked it and you've ended up with a random sized rectangle that w we don't know that's well, not the end of the world we can dimension that fairly easily uh, in the create tab dimension and I need to dimension either of these two lines it doesn't doesn't matter 40 enter and then either of the vertical lines again it, it doesn't matter so whichever way you've ended up here you should have now a 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter square we're going to right click over in white space press pull and click the shape and it should you should see that blue arrow if you did press pull and it didn't um, it didn't rotate around sometimes it, it remains looking top down as, as we are here if you press the shift key that up arrow on the left hand side of the keyboard or in the middle uh, and then the middle mouse wheel you can rotate around and just rotate until you can see the up the little blue arrow if you press the middle mouse wheel down by itself without the shift key it, it will drag around and if you just roll the mouse you'll zoom in and out and those are the three really essential skills to have now I'm going to raise this up 40 millimeters that's 
40 mil length, width, and uh, height. Bro. Okay, I'm just going to press the home key here. Before you do any new process, it's always a good idea to press home and it will just rotate you back to this kind of standard viewpoint. We're now going to add a 5 millimeter fillet. This is a, a rounding process where we'll put a little radius on the edge of each of these edges. And it's up here. Under the Modify tab, we've kind of created a 3D form and now we're modifying it. So there's Fillet, or if you go into Modify Fillet, or you could just press the F key, which is what I'm going to do here. F, and it's brought up this Fillet window. Keep an eye on these windows that pop up on the right. There's some really useful information in there. Now you could select all edges and apply the Fillet, and just make your way around, uh, picking up the various edges. You'd have to hold control to do this. Uh, if I hold control, it allows me to select additional edges. It's not the easiest way. I'm going to get rid of those there. The best way is if you click and drag over the whole object, it selected all faces, all edges, and I can just put in my 5mm fillet here and it will apply a fillet uh, to all the sides all at once. Job done. Brill. So we're going to start on the top face by adding our initials or uh, some text. So we go create sketch on the top face here. We're now going to use the text tool. I'm going to click uh, somewhere in the bottom left. Try and avoid snapping to these sort of intersection points. Fusion will think you want it to be absolutely fixed at that point. It's not quite what we want for this operation. So click somewhere kind of randomly in this corner and type your initials. Now for whatever reason it comes through upside down. I'm not too sure, but uh, it does. A couple of things we're going to change. We're going to make the height of the letters 20 millimeters. Again, here's quite a good example of where you want to keep your eye out for these boxes that appear because there's tons of useful information. The angle we can either set with kind of a free rotation or by typing it in and minus 135 is correct for this. You can try bold and italic and underlined and you can try different fonts. I found them a little hit and miss. Some of them haven't quite worked for me. I know Arial works. So for this demo, I'm going to stick with that. And the big blue uh, grab handle here will allow us to move it. So it's kind of centered. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, just sort of centered on our on our face there. You press OK. And then we can right click, press pull, pick the lettering, and you should see there's a blue arrow over here. You could raise it up, but actually, for almost all these operations, we're going to be doing a cut into the material uh, minus five millimeters, and that will cut that text into that surface. Okay, I'm going to press the home button, and it's a good idea to save pretty frequently. Uh, give it some sort of name that's going to make sense to you should you need to revert to this uh, save point later on. Okay, second face, we are going to do uh, a shocked face. So create sketch, it doesn't really matter which face you do, I'm going to choose it on the left hand side here. Now I'm going to draw a, a circle and I want the um, I want the face to be centered in the middle of this area. Now the way we can do that, there's a few different ways, but uh, a really good way is to use construction lines. So I need a line, but I'm going to change it over on the right here into construction line. It might be that sketch palette is minimized to, to the edge here. Just maximize it, change it to construction mode, and draw a line corner to corner. Either way, doesn't matter at all. I'm now going to come out of construction mode because the features I want to draw now uh, I need to extrude. When I do the press pull, the construction line won't be uh, factored into to that process, but I want the circles and, and the rest of the features to be extruded. So I've just selected the circle tool, and we're going to move our mouse up and down this line. It's a little hard to see. Maybe if I come in from an angle, you'll see it a bit clearer. We're looking for a triangle there. As you come down, the triangle indicates the center point of that line. I'm going to click 
and drag out and this circle we're going to make 25 millimeters a handy little tool over here on the side is this look at uh, button if you press that you will look at the sketch you're doing kind of flat on and again I'm going to press the middle mouse wheel here just to drag it uh, centrally we shall have another circle here and this one 27 28 mil uh, works quite nicely for this we're then going to draw a mouth if you hover over the center point and then move your mouse down you can see that blue dotted line it, it kind of helps keep you aligned centrally uh, we're going to make the mouth 8 millimeters. it doesn't matter too much really but I found 8 mil works quite nicely and sketch once more we'll have an eye somewhere over here 4 millimeters seems to work quite nicely for the eyes and again I'm going to hover over that eye and just move horizontally uh, and it will keep it all aligned this is kind of a freeform shape you, you can move stuff around it doesn't have to be um, absolutely symmetrical but just the way that emojis are uh, drawn it, it works quite nicely to keep them uh, as symmetrical as possible so that's the shocked face done I'm going to right click press pull and select the gap between the two rings the two eyes and the mouth again look at it from a bit of an angle and drag in 5 mil and there we go there's our shocked face now just before we move on to one of the other faces just worth kind of talking about what's going on down here this area at the bottom is really important this is the timeline and it tracks everything that we've done so far in our build the very first thing we did was a sketch that 40 by 40 sketch we extruded that this blue um, cuboid is an extrude we then filleted the corners we then did a sketch that was the initials and the extrude of that sketch we then did a sketch of the face and the extrude of that sketch if you wish to change a feature find it in the timeline so if I want to change the extrusion the three-dimensional uh, sort of aspect of that uh, that face I can right click edit feature and I could cut it deeper if I wanted I could bring it out just be a little bit careful if you're doing this it'll it'll most likely stick to the operation it originally was which was a cut I'm going to change that to a join and there you go you can see it's now adding material again if I push that in it's it's going to stay as a join so I need to change that back to a cut for this one though I don't need to change it minus 5 is a good depth all the faces will be minus 5 what I am going to change though is the actual shape of the face and this is something for you to kind of play around with as, as you like the sketch here is the sketch of the face and that then is it is the extrusion if I right click the sketch edit sketch I, I can come in and make some tweaks and changes and here's just a couple of little things that you can play around with uh, if you google emojis there's all sorts of different uh, obviously faces and, and shapes and stuff that you can uh, you can play with but have a go at just drawing some lines here through the uh, through your face and I'm going to draw some eyebrows in you can kind of draw any shape you want with the line as this line tool as long as you end up back at the start point there as long as you kind of complete the shape uh, it should work if I finish sketch now nothing happens the extrusion is still using the original sketch I haven't changed that I've just sort of added to it to add in the extra features that we've just drawn we have to right click the extrusion edit that and then you can see I've, I've got seven features selected here seven different bits and pieces you could either press X and reselect everything that you wanted or unselect the bits that you don't want and select the bits that you do and you can make a, a real change to a I guess the character of the uh, the emoji so have a play around with that uh, you should be able to get some kind of pretty interesting different facial expressions from your uh, emoji or if I undo we can just keep it as the shock face okay moving on 
and then again I've pressed home here uh, just gonna save okay next thing we're gonna do is a uh, rain cloud so I'm gonna create a sketch on this face and we're gonna draw a 20 millimeter line horizontally sort of from left to right don't start right on the edge so slightly in from the edge draw across try and keep it horizontal and 20 millimeters you can then drag this around as, as you want um, but sort of keep it fairly central so this is this um, cloud is going to make use of a, a different tool we're going to be using the circle tool but not the center circle center is your standard circle uh, you click once and drag out you sort of select the center point and, and drag out and that's what we use almost all the time we're actually going to use for this one the two-point circle I've only ever really used it for this task you may find need for it in the future it's good to have a, a kind of grasp on what most of these tools do um, you never really know what tool you'll need for, for your design so we're just going to play around and, and get used to some of the different um, tools as we go through these exercises so the two-point circle is the one we're using now we're going to click on the edge of the circle and drag up and what the two-point circle does is it, it allows you to select the sort of the opposite sides of the circle, the two the two edges. So we're going to draw a whole series of circles here, and the the golden rule is they absolutely must touch. So the next circle must start touching the edge of the first. There will be some overlap, uh, which is absolutely fine. And there to finish. We're then going to use the trim tool here just to tidy it up a little bit. I'm going to try and remove the excess. Oh, I lost the line there. Hmm. I'm just going to undo. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Trim. Okay. We're going to cut away all of the excess. Don't worry about the, the constraints uh, at the bottom. It'll be okay. This is a obviously more of a kind of a free form shape than a I guess a traditional engineering task where everything is locked and fixed to shape. This is a little more artistic. When you finish the trimming, you can tweak the cloud a little bit if you want. Uh, I'm just going to press the escape tool. If you look next to my cursor, you can see I still have the trim tool selected. I'm going to press escape to drop that. If we grab the middle of these circles, we should be able to move them a little bit. Just be careful. It it's quite a fragile drawing at this point. If we move it too much, it might go a bit haywire on us. So I'm fairly happy with that. We're now going to use something called the offset tool. Again, it's under modify, and it's here. O. You could just click O on the keyboard, and we're going to click the outside edge of the shape, and offset to an external offset it will allow you an internal offset um, but for this one we are going to do a one millimeter offset all the way around the outside and right click press pull pick up that bit in between and drag it in five mil brilliant a little extra piece you don't need to do this um, you can have some fun with this one if you do a sketch on this face again it's really easy to add in extra bits and pieces a little lightning bolt maybe maybe some raindrops um, yeah you can, uh, you can kind of play around with this then right click press pawn pick the little bits and pieces and again cut those in minus five there we go okay uh, the next face we are going to do I'm going to press home here the next face uh, we will draw a Sun I'm going to use the create sketch and roll around and we'll draw it on the opposite side of the cloud uh, 
for the sun, we uh, we need a circle right in the middle, so we're going to do another construction line. So we're going to grab the line tool, again change it to construction, and just do a corner to corner uh, line. Take it out of construction mode, draw a circle, click right in the middle, you can see the triangle there, and drag out. Now, just something to kind of draw your attention to. I don't know if you can see, but it, it's it's kind of jumping to and sticking to um, some of the features. You can see it's got the blue lines there and, and these extra bits and pieces. What Fusion is doing is it's asking if I want to snap to features or, or be um, constrained, I suppose, to features that are in the on the sketch on the opposite side. So actually it was snapping to these bottom edges here which really isn't helpful at all in, in this operation I'm just going to finish this circle and tell you how to disable that because I, it's not a feature that I think is particularly helpful it may already be turned off for you but I'm just going to show you how to turn it off anyway for the uh, the Sun we'll start with a 12 millimeter circle as far as those kind of projection preferences if you click up in the top Preferences, so in the top right, and then Preferences, Design, under General, and there's a little dot here, a uh, little checkbox that says Auto Project Edges on Reference. We don't want that. Some projects you may do, but not for this one. Apply and OK. Brilliant. OK, for the, uh, the sun then. We're going to draw another circle. This one is going to be a construction circle, and you'll see why in a moment. And it's going to be 27 millimeters in diameter. We're now going to draw uh, not in construction mode, so take that off, and we're going to draw a slot. Create slot, center to center slot. And we're going to start at this intersection point, and we're going to come down. It doesn't really matter. There's not a specific specified length. Um, somewhere around five millimeters. I'm going to type five there, and it must be the line must be stuck on this diagonal. We're then going to drag out. So what the um, the center to center uh, slot tool does is it you position the two center points which I did and then you drag out for the the width of that slot and the width of this will be two millimeters now we could go and draw as many of those rays of Sun as, as we want but there's a, a nice tool in here that we're gonna make use of to do that for us I guess if you come into the create tab circular pattern this is a brilliant tool for replicating uh, parts of the sketch. Again, keep an eye on this window. The first thing it's asking is for you to select the objects that you wish to pattern. So it is one line, two, three, four parts that make up that ray of sun, if you like. That's all I want to copy. So now I can move on to center point. I pick the middle of the circle. You can actually click the outer edge. It does exactly the same thing, but sort of locates the center point of that circle. We want to do a full uh, pattern. If you wanted to, you could set that to an angle, but usually it, it's a full pattern you're looking for. And then you can choose the quantity. I'm going to bump this up. Uh, eight works really nicely with this number um, because, or well, with this sketch I suppose because we have the first one at 45 degrees 8 completes it quite nicely but you can play around um, with the number and then we just right click press pull select the middle of the circle all of the rays and you'll note this circle the 27 millimeter one that we drew uh, the construction circle it cuts through these sketches but 
it doesn't interfere with the extrusion. I don't have to pick the top and bottom half, it, it just picks the slot, and that's why we did it as construction mode. I'm going to twist this around a little bit and then drag that in 5 mil. Great. Going to save. Get used to saving pretty frequently if you can. Uh, if Fusion were to crash or something go wrong, at least you have it backed up. The next face we're going to do, we'll do over here on, on this face. We're going to do a sketch, create sketch on here. And for this one, we are going to draw the poo emoji. So I'm going to show you how to trace an image. It's not a technique we use all that often, but it's a good one to know. Um, I suppose if you if you had a hand-drawn sketch that you wanted to turn three-dimensional, you could always scan it, and then this is how you could go about um, turning that two D sketch into a into a three D object if you wanted. We're using it in a slightly different way, uh, but the idea of having a canvas um, is uh, is a really valuable one in, in Fusion. So we're going to attach a canvas. I've actually already uploaded it into my schoolwork. Uh, folder you could always insert from computer just go on um, go on Google save an image uh, that you wish to trace or obviously uh, scan if, if you if it's a sketch um, and you can go straight from your computer onto the model but I already have it uploaded so I'm going to click insert and then ask me to choose the face that I want it to be on so it is this face here it's scaled pretty well it will kind of auto um, scale to fit the space you could make it a little bit bigger if you wanted this diagonal one will stretch it bigger and smaller but I'm happy with it as it is I'm gonna press OK and you'll note that in the dice if I expand it I now have the body the physical object which I can turn on off I have all the sketches when you do an extrusion the sketch becomes invisible um, so that's the top sketch I did the sketch for the the cloud when you as soon as you perform the uh, the extrusion it becomes invisible uh, but we also have uh, canvases and oh, I can turn that on and off now so I'm already in a sketch if if I wasn't I can just create a sketch on that face but we already were in a sketch so I didn't really need to do that we're now going to trace around the around the emoji and this is why turning off that Auto project in the preferences is, is really important as you're doing this. If you hadn't turned that off, it would be picking up all the features sort of from the far side of this cube, from the smiley face, and it would be trying to snap to those which we don't want. So um, if you haven't already done that, I would go back and uh, watch how to turn those off. So for this one, we're going to trace all the way around the inner edge. You could do the inner or the outer, it doesn't matter too much. We are using a, a different tool here. It's going to be the spline tool, the fit point spline. Start at the uh, the end and click. And this tool works um, by creating curves between points. So every time I click, it puts another bend point in the uh, in the line. So I'm going to make my way all the way around here. Ignore the internal details for the time being. We will come back and, and pick up some of those later. I'm just going to make my way all the way around. Get used to using the middle mouse wheel. It's really, really helpful in this uh, this situation. I'm just pressing it down uh, when I get kind of close to the edge. Like here, press the middle mouse wheel down, drag it across. The, uh, the longer you spend on this, the more accurate it's going to be, but I'm kind of racing around here a little bit. And really, really important, you must finish at the, uh, the start point, and that will make it a complete shape. We're then going to offset. The shortcut is O, or it is down here. Click that line, and drag it out by one millimetre. 
and there you go, or minus one millimeter. Okay, I'm now going to right click, press pull, and pick up that gap between the two, and I'm going to pull that in minus five. You won't see it really. It's you can sort of see it through the canvas. If I turn the canvas off, it's it's really apparent. Now this one, uh, this face, I would advise doing in multiple sketches. It's not usually the case that that's a good idea, um, but it's quite complex. So I've already done one sketch and an extrusion. I'm now going to do uh, another sketch and an extrusion for some of this internal detail. You could do it all on the same one, but there's a higher probability that it, it might go wrong. Again, create sketch on the face you wish to draw. I'm going to trace with the fit point spline this mouth. And then the more zoomed in you are, the more accurate it can be. If you know, I kind of went off in this l upper portion here. I'm going to press escape to drop the tool and then grab that point there and you can manipulate any of these and move stuff around afterwards. You can get it absolutely spot on if you wanted. I'm happy with that. I'm going to press O for the offset tool and I'm going to offset the mouth at just 0 0.5 mil. Now it's come inside. If you flip it, it should go outside or you could just type minus and that would work. So I could extrude that. I'm actually going to draw a few more features before we uh, before we extrude. I'm going to have a go at drawing in these eyes. We're going to use the ellipse tool for this. For the ellipse tool, you select the center of the oval or ellipse, and you drag out to the uh, kind of furthest points. Click once, and then move your mouse out to the side, and it will draw in the ellipse. I'd use the same start point for uh, the other bits of the eye and we'll keep it nice and uh, sort of concentric. Just be a little bit careful when you're doing this outer rim. You, you don't really want it crashing over the um, the first sketch we did. Uh, so this bit here is very close. I just advise you give yourself a little bit of a gap there so they don't touch each other. And same on this side. So my center point is slightly off here. You can see I've not quite got that right, but and it's not the end of the world. It will work. Again, you can spend as long as you want getting that absolutely spot on. I'm going to right click and press pull and pick up the bits that we want to cut in. So the mouth, the inner eyes, and these rings around the outside edge. And we'll drag those in minus five mil, press OK, and at this point we can turn off the canvas and we can see our creation. If you want to do these swirls through, you can do them as a separate sketch, just make sure that they are a, a kind of complete shape, uh, that you don't leave the ends open. Uh, a little bit tricky, but uh, definitely not impossible. I'm going to turn off the canvas there. And that's just about it. I'm going to leave the, the last face blank. You can choose your own emoji, your own graphic, whatever you want. Uh, but that is our emoji cube. We can, uh, we can export that for 3D printing really easily. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just your add. Add something on the, on the underside, any other emoji you want. And then if you're able to, 3D print it out. Just going to save this. Oh. That is the emoji cube all done.